Welcome to the second episode of the Coaster Content Podcast. We have quite a bit of news from you today from many different rides closing, different things happening in the theme park community, and mascot changes, and even more. To start off, um, yesterday was the final day for the Kid Zone area um, and all of its attractions located. And today, they're already closed off the area and they have like work zone things around it. They're already doing a ton of stuff in the area the day after it closes, which is crazy. And another bit of news is Carowinds set up their Airwalker Zamperla Skater Ride. Um, they're opening an entirely new area at Carowinds, which is really cool. And seeing that all the new attractions are already getting put out, it's going to open probably in a few months, I'm pretty sure. And it's just like very excited to see all of this. And um, Zamperla Airwalkers are going to be cool rides to see. Wiener Prater is beginning its demolition. Vienna Looping, which is the largest uh, movable roller coaster, is being demolished. Or not demolished, but being moved. Which is going to be really interesting to see where it's going to go next. And sad that Wiener Prater doesn't have that anymore, but it was a good ride to have there for a bit of time. Um, at Drayton Manor, um, their director is confirming a new family thrill coaster for 2024. It's really cool to see that um, all of these smaller parks, or even parks in general, just are getting new um, coasters because parks like this and Worlds of Fun and all those parks, it's really good to see these um, get new roller coasters, especially just new roller coasters getting announced. We don't know quite what it is yet. We don't know much about it, but Drayton Manor getting a new one, that's going to be pretty good for the park. Um, Paltons Park um, is having a different mascot returning, Percy the Owl. It's their 40th anniversary. Um... So they're taking their old mascot back, which is Percy the Owl, which is really cool. Um, Paltons Park is a park that is located in the UK, so it's good to see them get another thrill coaster, or not thrill coaster, sorry, n another new mascot um, returning for that. That'll be really cool, especially for their 40th anniversary. Um, Far Up Summerland is refurbishing their Wild River Slides, which is really cool. Um, it, I saw some photos of that. It looks like it's like really snowy there. But it's really good to see them refurbishing those wild river slides. Looks like those will be pretty good. It's really interesting to see how those will change and to see if those slides will run any differently, if it'll be faster, slower. It's kind of like a river raft slides, if I remember it correctly or if I think of it correctly. But the it'll be really cool to see those slides be refurbished. Wonder if they'll change the paint color, all of that. Stuff like that. So that'll be really cool to see how those um, wild river slides are going to be treated and stuff like that. Um, Serengeti Park, um, they're... They're getting a biography of their old owner, which will be really good to see. Keep an eye out for that documentary. It'll be really good to see. Um, something kind of sad that happened at Universal Studios Hollywood. They had to evacuate Super Nintendo World's indoor areas after a fire alarm went off at the Toes Tool Cafe. I haven't heard too much about this. It seems like nothing really too bad happened and there wasn't really a fire or anything from what I heard of. But it's just kind of sad when anything like that happens, especially at a theme park, especially um, Super Nintendo World is such a new park, it just opened a few days ago, so it's kind of sad seeing how they had to evacuate that area and stuff, but, um, yeah, it's, I think everyone turned out it should be back open today, and I think it even reopened that day, so it's good to see that it reopened, but it's just kind of hard when those, um, places get affected by, like, fire alarms and stuff like that. Um, Energylandia has um, the infamous, infamous Viking coaster. So this coaster is a spinning wild mouse coaster, but I've heard it's very rough, it's not very fun. It actually has 0% reviews on a lot of places because of how bad it is. So this coaster is, has been put on the market for smaller parks, and for just parks in general. I'm not sure how well they're going to sell it, but it's really interesting to see that they put it back on the market. So I think they tried this previously and no one bought it. So having it back on the market, I mean, if you know someone who wants a spinning wild mess coaster, that's very expensive probably. So <laughs> there's that, but it's really interesting seeing that. Um, uh, another bit of news is that the ride Anubis um, at Plopsaline de Pan um, valleyed while they were testing it in the morning because of how strong the winds were. It's, it's, that's just to show that some rides sometimes, because of how windy they places can be, that sometimes rides can valley. So I'm not totally sure how they get rides out of a valley. Like, if ride valleys, how do they move it? Um, if you know, just let me know. But it's really interesting to see how um, just rides like this can valley. I bet it'll be up and running soon, but just sad things like this. Um, when rides valley, like sometimes it can be dangerous, like the Smiler at UK. If one valleys and is not known, it can cause serious injury to a lot of different people. So it's kind of 
sad that that happened, but they probably are getting that fixed up pretty quickly. It should be reopened soon. Um, another bit of news is at Pleasure, Ble- Pe- Pleasure Beach in Blackpool. Um, they're beginning a centennial overhaul of the roller coaster Big Dipper. Big Dipper is 100 years old this year, which means it's one of the oldest roller coasters in the world. And they've already removed the onion off of the top of it, which is like a really big staple of it. So I really wonder what the what's really going to happen with this. But um, with all of this, it's going to be really interesting to see what they can do with the ride, if they're going to repaint it, if it'll be smoother, all of this different stuff. It opened in 1923, so it's really cool to see rides that are still around, still getting taken care of. And the fact that it's going to get refurbished this year is um, its awesome. Centennial overhaul, I'm not totally sure what Pleasure Beach is going to do, but I'm really excited to see what this ride looks like, what um, they're going to do with it, and it's just going to be awesome. Um, Hot Park in Brazil held the grand opening of Turbilhados. I'm not pronouncing that correctly, I'm sorry. But it's a pair of pro slide raft slides. So um, there's going to be funnels, um, flying saucers. It's going to be all this different stuff, different little functions and all of that. So it's really cool to see those open. Um, raft slides are always really fun. I really like those, especially ones that go fairly quickly. I'm not totally sure how these are going to act and work and stuff. But yeah, these ref slides sounds really fun. And final, um, two more bits of news and then I'll be done. Um, Or three more, I don't know, there's quite a bit. But um, Mission Ferrari POV, there's been one released out of Ferrari World. I'm not totally sure how this POV is gonna totally be, but it looks like it'll be a pretty cool ride. It looks like you start in like a really well themed thing. There's a lot of screens and stuff, so it's gonna be like that. Um, And as you kind of go through the course of the ride, there's a lot of dark sections and it's like a lot of good theming uh i'm really excited for this ride to open for a lot of people to start getting to ride it hear some reviews of it it's going to be really exciting but seeing this first pov it looks like it's going to be really well themed this is opening at ferrari world in abu dhabi which is in the uae so it's going to be really cool just to see how this coaster um, i'm pretty sure it's coaster how this coaster and all of that kind of looks once all the theming's there it looks like it's going to be a dark ride, but I've I hope it's gonna be fairly fast. But looks like it's gonna be really cool. It looks like a lot of really good theming. And Fuji Q Highland um, retired their merry-go-round, which is kind of sad. It's been operating for 41 years, and there's a big photo of everyone in front of it. But yeah, it's a really nice um, merry-go-round. It's like really bright. There's a lot of just design on it. It's really cool. So it's really cool to see that, but it's also really sad to see rides get retired. I wonder what they'll replace it with, if there'll be another merry-go-round, a small um, ride, maybe it'll be Drop Tower. I'm not totally sure, but it's sad to see rides retired, but that also means that there's opened up space at Fuji Q Highland for other rides to take its spot. And the final bit of news for today is how Energy Landia um, uh, broke their record for attendance again. They released one, received 1.85 million guests in 2022. Their previous high was 1.8 million the year prior. So it's really awesome to see Energy Landia. They really deserve these amount of people with all the amazing rides they're putting into the park, all the rides they currently have, and everything relating to this park. I've actually heard a lot of really good things about Energy Landia, and I'd recommend going there. It's an awesome park, and it's just all the work and care they're putting into this park is really good. So. 1.85 million people is a lot for 2022. That's that's a ton. So parks like this really deserve that. If you're near there, I'd definitely go to Energy Landia. Totally worth it. A lot of really good roller coasters and rides there. But that about sums up all the news for today. So I hope you enjoyed this video um, or this podcast. If you're watching on Spotify, then make sure to leave a follow up on YouTube. Please like, subscribe, and comment down below as it really does help the podcast and the channel out. And as always, have a really good day and ride safely.